is your Dreaded Crypto channel. Davey coming at you. All right, so we're still consolidating. We're around the 19,000 uh, price mark with Bitcoin, so you can't complain too much there. Um, you want to take a quick little gander. I'm looking at the hourly chart. We are making a bit of an inverse head and shoulders pattern, possibly. It's not confirmed yet, but you got a shoulder here, shoulder here, head. So we could consolidate, come on down here and repeat this action. We'll be coming up to $22,000, $23,000. That would be a confirmation of that pattern. I'm personally not banking on that. I'm, I'm not any long-term trades with Bitcoin currently. I am hodling, but... I don't feel comfortable with this giant run up to try to make any crazy gains. Um, yeah, so in other words, though, just kind of checking in with the news and updates like that, it looks like we might be getting another stimulus package coming in. Mitch McConnell made some pretty positive comments there. And they've pretty much, I mean, Trump is all for it. And. Uh, the Dems, have, of course, are for it. So it looks like they're going to move towards it. So if they don't do it, then it's going to look like, like a, a big shock and market crash, which they do not want. So there's a good chance we're going to get that before Christmas. Plus, that would be a good boost to economic activity right at the end of the fourth quarter, which would make the numbers come in positively, hopefully, at the first quarter next year, which I think there will be a, probably be a bit of a shock there. I, with all these new closures this last quarter, with all the um, coronavirus stuff and cities shutting down, I, next quarter could be rough um, with the numbers. Personally, that, that's it makes some sense for me, and that would also co coincide with a pullback with our stock market and crypto market. I think we're gonna keep on running up. We could come down and correct a little bit over the next week or two, and then maybe have another run into the new year. Uh, just be ready for that. I, I mean, have cash on hand. Not financial advice, but, you know, just be ready for anything. That's, uh, that's what, my, what I told my buddy. He was asking me, what does the TA say? But, you know, the TA hasn't really proved uh, to be very effective in this run. I was, you know, watching some other people, uh, Kevin Svensson, and I mean, he, he basically – you're trying to like time where the pullbacks are going to be. There's been lots of bearish divergences and none of them have been um, really acting out. Uh, there's just too much bullishness in the market. And that's just uh, how it is, which is great. But it also kind of makes it tough to try to figure out a bottom or a trough to buy. Um, dollar cost average, you know, DCA, that's your, that's your best bet. Um, you know, it won't leave you hanging too hard, but, uh, we're definitely at a at a peak, so we'll, we'll retrace retrace at some point. We'll come back down to that 21 moving average, and that would be the place to buy. And I'm sure there'll be all kinds of negativity and threats of regulation, and uh, who knows what would cause the whole thing? Maybe maybe some shock with the president, or something like that. Maybe maybe Trump gets in somehow, or maybe uh, you know maybe all the Trump supporters are finally give up and. They pull all their money out because probably most of them are the business owners and rich people that have money in the stock market. And they realize that he definitely has no chance and they'll pull their money out when Biden gets inaugurated. It's definitely possible. So, yeah, I guess the theme here is just be prepared for anything. You know, have cash on hand. Don't go. Don't be completely all in on one little thing. Uh, so I've been uh, delving into some stocks as well. So, um yeah, the block blockchain stocks have been ripping. Um, I'm in a few of them. Hive is one. Uh, yeah, Hive, Riot, uh, Mara, Silvergate, and yeah, Marathon. I mean, uh, just there's a whole slew of them. There's a there's a bunch of different um, ETFs as well. I'm gonna go ahead and list them off if I can. Let's see if we can find them on my computer here. Uh, yeah, let's see what we can find here. Yeah, so, so Hive, Mara, Block is one 
of the ETFs. Um, also, funny, funny enough, uh, pot stocks have been starting to bounce a little bit. And if you look at, uh, I'm not trying to talk about pot stocks too much, but if you look at a lot of the pot stocks, um, they almost did something similar to what Bitcoin did their its first run, or actually at the end of each cycle, you know, tops out, then go, or corrects 80%, goes into a bear market, and then comes on back. And that's exactly what the uh, pot stocks have done. They a lot of them corrected 70, 80, some 90%, and now they're starting to level off and start making some gains. So, I mean, pot stocks are almost like buying Bitcoin right now. Something to something to look at, look into if you're trying to be more traditional market. Um, and there's some other, uh, yeah, blockchain technology stocks. There's Oracle, I believe they're uh, involved in blockchain. Uh, let's see if we can keep on going. Lumen. And there's a handful of others. Like IBM is definitely involved. IBM, is, a, I believe, is part of a link as well. Intel, uh, NVIDIA, obviously, for mining. Uh, there's mining stocks. HSBC, apparently, is looking into uh, blockchain technology. I mean, the banks are looking into this stuff. So, I mean, everyone's like, oh, short the banks, you know, long Bitcoin. Yeah, like, Bitcoin is the future, but banks are not going to just give up and not be there. There's always going to be some kind of form of centraliz centralization. Just hopefully it won't be as uh, so much of a evil entity against uh, humanity. So maybe, maybe be able to combine forces and make things work. Yeah, so BLOK block is one. BMRN is another. Oh, no, excuse me, that's a biotech stock. Um, BLCN, that's a next generation ETF focused on blockchain. Uh, that's a few of them. I have a hard time like recognizing I have a bunch of stocks. Just, you know, something to look into if you're got some money in the stock market and maybe you're making some interest payments or getting your interest paid to you through other stocks maybe take some of those profits with your interest and dividends and put it into a couple of speculative uh, ETFs that's what I'm doing not financial advice but there's something going on there uh, let's see what else we got going on so I just signed up to crypto watch and I'm kind of giving this a little bit of whirl and see how this goes but I'm kind of liking the layout um, the XRPs you know consolidating there's just a lot of consolidation out there um, oracles I think the oracles are gonna start moving uh, chain link band protocol uh, there's a few others I mean I think they're gonna start running pretty soon their the consolidation is likely coming to an end uh, I actually hold a little bit of Civic, and that thing has just been ripping. Unfortunately, I don't hold enough to really jump up and down about, but it's just kind of cool to hold on to something that's doing well. Now, let's take a look at uh, Chainlink and see what's happening here. Hopefully, it opens. It might take a, take a moment. Uh... Yeah, but so I think altcoins are going to start running through this whole consolidation and everything. It's it's looking it's looking pretty good. But there are a lot of people saying that we're going to come come on down and test the 21 week with with Bitcoin. If that happens, everything is going to come on down. Yeah, and we're still in this nice trading channel. I haven't driven, driven, <laughs> drawn any lines in this uh, program yet. I definitely plan to use Crypto Watch a little bit more. So when that happens, it'll look a little bit more uniform. But so yeah, so we're in this channel, and oh, let me just come out of this daily. Also, gold. Gold has been bouncing. 
gold and silver have bounced. So, and that's a lot. A lot of that's due to the uh, money printing, the speculative money printing. If they do the stimulus thing, and it's looking like they will, gold is going to rise. Uh, speculative assets, altcoins, Bitcoin, going to rise. You know, stocks will rise too. I mean, every everything like that. But what will fall is the U.S. dollar. And I pity anybody that's putting their, you know, hard-earned money into an interest-bearing account, getting like 0.001%. That's just, it's just no way to really get anywhere. Uh, but yeah, just chain links, just looking, looking great. Um, what else we got? So going back. Take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum is still consolidating and could be hitting a bit of a double top on the RSI. So it could come on, come on down to the 400 level again. That'd be a nasty drop. That would happen if Bitcoin dropped, right? But it doesn't have to happen. If Bitcoin continues to rise, you know, we'll, Ethereum will do great. No doubt about that. Mm -mm -mm. Also, there's a lot of uh, a lot of great news coming out with Cardano, Cardano, however you want to say it, ADA. Uh, Gogan is launching in the next day or two, and I bet there will be a lot of speculation with that. Um, it, it's looking really primed. I don't have it on this chart. Let's look it up on this yeah, on Coin Gecko. Take a look at ADA. But it's looking, looking slick, looking really slick. So with all this news, you know, looking like it's gonna push Cardano up, it might also push Litecoin up. That the brief mention with their partnership, it's kind of fallen to the side. So I wouldn't bank on Litecoin going crazy yet, but uh, it could. Something to think about. Yeah, let's look. One year Cardano. Yeah, it's just to me it's looking looking great. And the potential, the earnings potential with with these smaller coins, like look, we're so early with the altcoins. I mean we were dollar, dollar twenty five at the top of Cardano and we're at fifteen cents. I mean, if we go to like five dollars, crazy ten dollars or twenty, you gotta think long term. If 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 it ends up becoming something that's used as a platform, like Ethereum, a competitor to Ethereum, it's 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 donezo end game. You're, <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of opportunity to make some good money with that. The other one I'm really liking is Voyager. Um, let's see if it comes up, Voyager. Yeah, the Voyager token. Like, not many people know about this. I've been trying to promote um, a lot of different apps, and you know, see, it's it's starting to pop on up, kind of like ADA. It's a similar price, it's 15, 16 cents. Um, so the app is, you know, it's kind of like Coinbase or uh, Crypto.com, but it's a lot more user friendly. It's a lot easier. You link it to your bank account, same as those, but to be able to buy and trade assets is extremely easy and it's a lot easier to manage them. It's not like an overwhelming amount of coins. The portfolio is smooth. Uh, so say if you have one coin and it just runs 50% in one day, you're like, well, I should probably maybe take 10 and 20% of that and put that into Bitcoin or a stable coin within the app. It's great. Like it, 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 you do it, you swipe, they take like, you know, 1%, 0.01% profit. Like, um, on a ten dollar trade, which is I think that's like the minimum on any kind of trade with it, you might lose ten cents, twenty cents. I mean that's, that's I, I think they're very reasonable. Um, uh, they also offer uh, half the coins on there offer interest and dividend, you know, like staking rewards. So it, it's great, and I think it's a hidden gem, and I think it's going to just go crazy. I, I think it's going it's going to go crazy.
what was it, like twelve dollars when I looked at it at the top. I mean that's <laughs> look look we're we're not even on the register. So I'm speculating on this one. Number number two oh six in the market cap. I mean, it was so low on there. Uh, amazing. Um, let us see. I had one other one I wanted to look at. ADA, Cardano. Oof. If I can remember. And there's also XRP, the Spark token release. XRP, I'm kind of wondering if it is going to run up any harder. It's had a good run. I just keep hoping that it's going to go up now, and it doesn't. So if it doesn't go up and Spark token is released, expect a pretty starch pullback. It'll probably come down to 30 cents. Wick down to it, maybe stabilize back down to 40 or 50 cents. But if we make a run up to $1 or $2, I think it would come back down to 50 cents, say, or 75 cents. All about those percentage gains, percentage pullbacks, with Fibonacci, which I plan on running through like a lot of the tools at some point um, in the soon to be future. Um, the computer is running a little more smoothly, but I want to make sure that it's crystal smooth. Crypto.com is still at a great buy. Um, that uh, I'm, I'm pretty uh, I. I like Voyager, the Voyager app, but I do hold some coins at Crypto.com, and it's pretty user-friendly, and then you can stake coins on there as well. Um, I don't know, I think there's going to be a battle for exchange wallets and exchange companies, Visa debit cards and all that. There's going to be a bit of a, you know, that the, this cycle is all about institutionals coming, institutions coming in, kind of the legitimacy of Bitcoin and crypto coming into the new world. I mean, the last cycle, you got to think, everyone just heard about Bitcoin. Like, no one really talked about Ethereum or anything like that. I mean, just, the, you know, the, the real internet dorks, and I wasn't even one then. You know, those were the ones making all the money with that. But this cycle, we're just, this whole thing is being legitimized now. And people are starting to hear about Ethereum and XRP and some of these other coins, let alone, you know, Cardano or Voyager or, you know, any of these other ones. They, they're just, they don't know what they are yet. So we're so early on. So I think later in this cycle is going to be when people are pretty familiar with, say, the top 10 or top 20. So it's good to keep an eye on all of that. And I think. And not, you know, so institutions have all embraced Bitcoin, but no one has really talked about Ethereum and some of these other ones. There's a couple of trusts that hold, I think, a, an assemblage of the top 10 or they're, they're speculative assets. But, you know, it, no one, I don't, I don't think, I could be wrong. They just, they just don't talk about it. I mean, I think you're going to hear about the news at the end of this cycle talking about holding 10%, 20% Ethereum and XRP, and they're going. It's going to be a lot more talk about, say, futures trading and stuff like that. CME Group pulling in Ethereum, you know, uh, that's what's going to happen, I think. So, just keep uh keep on truck along, trucking along, and yeah, we'll uh we'll see how this things goes, and we'll I'll see you tomorrow. Trying to work in uh, some music. Uh, that was actually my old band at the beginning of it, Memory Fade, if you care to take a listen. Um, yeah, just trying to work a way to edit that into the beginning. That was completely me just clicking on it, obviously. So, uh, yeah, you guys have a good night, and good luck to everybody, and peace out.